Good morning. We're going to talk about silicate minerals and their classification. Silicate minerals make up a small percentage of the minerals on Earth, but they present roughly 80 or 90 percent of rock forming minerals. All the silicates are built around tetrahedral structures, usually a silicon surrounded by four oxygens. And we can show that this way. There's the oxygen, the big oxygen, a second one here, and a third one there. And then the silicon, which is a small cation, sits in here. And the final silicon would go on top, okay, like that. And that's the silica tetrahedron. We can also show this in a ball and stick model. There's the silica. And here are the oxygens. One, two, three, four. And they form a tetrahedron like that. Okay. So a simplifying way of, of describing or drawing silica tetrahedra is just to draw a triangle like this. Okay. And then the apex of the tetrahedra like that. Each one of these intersections is an oxygen. That one, that one, that one, and this one. And in the center of the tetrahedron is a silica. Okay? So if you recall, Si it normally would have a charge of 4 plus, and each oxygen would have a charge of 2 minus. And so if you make an SiO4 group, it has a net charge of what? Minus four, okay? That's a silica tetrahedra group. In feldspars, sometimes we replace the silica with aluminum. So when we classify silicates, we classify based on how many of these silica tetrahedras are linked together or share common oxygens, for example, this one here. And the simplest case, which are called nesosilicates, or orthosilicates, the silica tetrahedra are isolated. Okay. And that's a nesosilicate, also called an orthosilicate. And you can see if there's one silica and there are one, two, three, four oxygens, the stoichiometry is one silica to four oxygens. An example of an orthosilicate or nesosilicate would be olivine, the common silicate in the upper mantle. And olivine is, has this formula, MgFe2SiO4. And it's convenient to write out the silica uh, stoichiometry, and you can see here the one silica to four oxygens. The next type of silicates uh, is one where we share one oxygen between two silica groups. And that would look like this. Here's one silica tetrahedron. And here's a second silica tetrahedron, like that. And these are called sorosilicates, also sometimes called disilicates. And you can see what the stoichiometry is. There would be two silicas in this one here and one there. Two silica. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven oxygens. Two, seven oxygens. An example of uh, sorosilicates, and there are many of these, are uh, minerals from the epidote group. And the epidote group has got uh, the disilicate structure as well as isolated silica tetrahedra. And the formula for uh, um, one of the sorosilicates in the epidote group would be clinozoazite, Ca2Al3, Si2O7. That's the uh, disilicate group. SiO4 oxygen, and then 1OH. Okay. 
Now we're going to go on to slightly more complicated structures. The next group of silicates are called chain silicates or inosilicates. Or chain silicates. And they are as uh, you'd expect them to be. They're elongated in one direction. That's normally the C axis goes this way of the mineral. And we can write out uh, one of these. There's the C axis. And here is the silica tetrahedra, like that. The next one on the opposite side of the chain, like that. And the next one farther up, like this. Okay. And if we pick a repeat distance from, say, here uh, to up here, you can count there are two, one ox silica here, one silica there. So two silicas to one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens. So the stoichiometry is one to three silica to oxygen. An example of this would be um, pyroxenes, which are the common simple single chained uh, inosilicates. And uh, enstatite would look like this, MgSiO3. Or if we picked uh, diopside, it would look like this, CaMgSi2O6. Okay. All right, so this is single chain. And now we're going to look at what happens when we have a double chain. I know silicates. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw this um, tetrahedral chain like that. There's the next tetrahedron. Like that. And the next one like that. Etc. And now we're going to share this oxygen with another tetrahedral chain over here. Okay like that. And like so. And this double chain is again elongated along the C axis in in a group of minerals that are called double chain. And the common double chain silicates are amphiboles. Okay? So the repeat distance, again, would be from here to there. And we can count, again, there are one, two, three, four silicas, four silica. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven oxygens. Okay, so amphiboles that are double chain silicates always have this stoichiometry of 1, um, 4 to 11. So a common amphibole would be uh, tremolite, which has a formula Ca2Mg5Si8O22OH twice. Okay. All right. Now we're going to uh, turn to uh, slightly more complicated and linked chains. You can see what's been happening as the number of silica tetrahedra that are linked increases, then the silica to oxygen ratio decreases. Okay, now we're going to look at ring silicates. And ring silicates are quite simple. Uh, they look like the same sort of linking. We start with a, a chain like of tetrahedra here. And then we don't link anything up up here or down there, but we link this tetrahedra to one over here, like that, and like that. And put in this, the tetrahedral symbols. This is a six-membered ring. Virtually all the uh, ring structures in the Earth are six-membered rings. And it's easy to count the number of silicons here. Six silicons, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and six silicon. 
and the number of oxygens, there's one that's shared on each of the rings here. There's six of those, and then there's two more out here. So it's three times six, so there are 18 oxygens. So these would be called ring silicates. And common ones include beryl and tourmaline. And beryl is an example shown here is Al2Be3Si6O18. And you can see this has the same 1 to 3 ratio of silica to oxygen as the inosilicate pyroxene group. Okay, the next type we're going to look at are sheet silicates, where the tetrahedral uh, silicas are linked to other silicas uh, in 2D sheets, okay? And they're also called phyllosilicates. So 2D sheets, okay? So let's look at how these work. Um, we could start with what we did above, uh, the same sort of geometry in a single plane. We have this sort of geometry of the tetrahedral groups that are linked together like that and then over here like that okay and then we just repeat the pattern so now this line here goes down and we have another tetrahedra and then over here another tetrahedra and over here, another tetrahedra, and here. Okay, so it turns out the repeat for a unit cell would be, is uh, quite simple, and it looks like this. Huh? Um, it's going to go up here, and that cell has two silicas in it, like that, and it has one, two, three, four, five oxygens. So in these, the stoichiometry is just two silicas to five oxygens. And a common mineral in the in simple phyllosilicate would be the serpentine group, which is consists of uh, silica tetrahedral sheets. And it has a formula of Mg3Si2O5OH4. Okay. More complicated sheet silicates like micas, chlorite. Some of these tetrahedra have, in addition to silica, they also have aluminum in tetrahedral coordination. Okay. The last type of silicates we're going to look at are called framework silicates. Those are also called tectosilicates. And in this case, the silicate, silica tetrahedra are linked together in a 3D uh, network, which is difficult to illustrate on this 2D sheet of paper, but we'll Give it a try. Here's one silica tetrahedra like that with four oxygens. And then in the center is a silica, okay, in the center of that. And each one of the oxygens is shared. So this one's shared with another tetrahedra like that. This is shared out here with another tetrahedra like that. And this one is shared up here with another tetrahedra. In addition, the apex of this tetrahedra shares its oxygen with an overlying tetrahedra, okay? So that means that every one of the oxygens is shared between two silica tetrahedrons. So we have one silica shared with and two oxygen, and that's the stoichiometry. As an example of this, we have the common rock-forming minerals uh, including silica minerals quartz, which has the formula SiO2, 
and feldspars. So we'll look at, for example, n member K feldspar would be K A L S I 3 O 8. And you can see again, aluminum plus silica is 4, oxygen 8, and we have the 1 to 2 stoichiometry. So in summary, the silicate minerals are classified based on how many silica tetrahedra are linked. They go from isolated tetrahedra of mesosilicates to doublets, to chain, single chains, double chains, and finally to ring silicates, sheet silicates, and then 3D framework silicates.